freedom. The power or right to act, speak, or think as one thinks or wants to without hindrance or restraint. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, even at this very hour, our freedoms are being put to the test in America. God has been so good to us, and He has allowed us to grow into the greatest nation on earth. But those freedoms are under attack. Satan is trying to viciously tear our country apart, all the way down to our Constitution that was founded on the principles of God. And at the present time, it seems as though he is succeeding. Our country is in a truly sad state. It seems that the foundations of our once great nation, whose backbone is and always has been liberty and freedom under God, is slowly slipping away. More and more, Americans are falling away from the great values and principles that our nation was founded on. And even worse than this, they are showing more disregard for the things of Christ, going so far as to say that our churches are non-essential. We all know that there is nothing more essential than our churches and the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. But as the Lord has already said, things will wax worse and worse. And boy, have they ever gotten worse. I've not been around long enough to see just how drastic this change has been, but I know that the changes that have taken place just since I have been paying attention have been staggering. Just the past 10 years alone have been devastating. All the damage that has been done to drag our country down closer to communism, socialism, and worst of all, spiritual depravity has shown just how quickly that freedoms that we have all had the privilege of knowing for many years may soon be coming to an end. Ronald Reagan said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children through the bloodstream, it must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Sadly, I fear that that generation has come. America's up and coming generations, as well as some of the older, are giving up that fight. So many are choosing to give up their stake in the freedoms of America for the promise of free handouts. Adolf Hitler said, the best way to take control over a people and control them utterly is to take a little of their freedom at a time to erode rights by a thousand tiny and almost imperceptible reductions. In this way, the people will not see those rights and freedoms being removed until past the point at which these changes cannot be reversed. We are seeing this happen all over our great nation. Our citizens are blindly laying down their unalienable rights little bits at a time. We as patriotic Americans love our freedom. And I believe that I can say with all confidence that all of us in this room would gladly fight and give our lives for it. Looking at all that we are seeing in our country has given us cause for great concern. And it seems as though no matter what we do to try and make things better, they just continue to grow worse and worse. Our freedom in America is truly and deeply at stake. But if we were to lose all our freedoms and all of the things that make our country great right now, if, we, if it were all to be taken away, brothers and sisters, I can tell you without hesitation that we will still have all the freedom that we will ever need. We have seen over and over again throughout the years that physical freedoms come and go. Throughout history, it has been seen time and time again that freedom is a very fragile thing in every society.
under every circumstance. But there always has been and always will be freedom in Jesus Christ. No matter what men try to take away from us, they can never take the freedoms that we have in Him. As Thomas Jefferson so eloquently and truthfully put it, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Tonight, I would like to talk for a little while, not about temporal freedoms, but about eternal freedoms that we have in Jesus Christ. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, and we'll read verses 11 through 13. The Word of God says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The first of these freedoms is kind of obvious, and that is eternal life. Nowhere can we go, there is absolutely no other way to receive eternal life outside of our precious Savior. What an honor it is to be able to go to Him and in simple faith receive the greatest freedom that anyone could ever know. Life and the ability to live it as we please, we know is a great freedom. And many men have fought and given up that very freedom to try and preserve it for their children. But it has been, and as long as this old world exists, will always be temporary. No matter how hard we fight, life will one day leave us. There is no possible way that we can stop that. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks to sin, we all have death to look forward to. There's no changing that. But thanks to our precious Lord, we have victory over it. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll read verses 4 and 5. The Word of God says, But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Knowing that we were worthless and doomed to death, seeing us desperately trying to hang on to our little piece of life here in this old sinful world. He has looked down on us in His rich mercy and perfect love, and He has quickened us. The definition of quickened is to revive or to make alive, to bring back to life or to restore to a former flourishing condition. No matter what we do, or how we improve ourselves in this life, our life without Christ is dead. God has made us alive. He has taken something dead and given it purpose that goes far beyond the greatest life we could ever live here without Him. I know that I often find myself worrying over all the little things that can affect my life down here. And if I'm not careful... I will allow them to consume all of my thoughts. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, and we'll read verses 2 and 3. God's Word says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. 
for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Without Christ, we are nothing, and our lives are meaningless. But He has given His promise that we will live forever. If we are putting our focus on the things of Christ, the heartaches and trials of this life begin to disappear. As the sweet old hymn says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Things can and will get so hard in this world full of evil and sin. But God, and God alone gives us the freedom to overcome anything that we face as He gives us the freedom to have life more abundantly. The second of these freedoms is eternal liberty. Turn with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and we'll read verses 31 through 36. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The definition of liberty is freedom without restraint, or the freedom from the effects of sin or spiritual servitude. Liberty has always been so important in the lives of all Americans. It is what makes America, America. Many a brave soul has fought and died to keep us for us to keep it and to protect it. Patrick Henry said in his famous speech, Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it gentlemen, that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? God forbid it, Almighty God. I know what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry was in the position of trying to convince his fellow delegates that war was being waged on their freedoms and that they were going to have to fight if they were to preserve their liberties. And fight they did. Our brave forefathers have throughout our entire history refused to give up or to give in in the face of tyranny. We are so thankful every day for the sacrifices of these brave men and women. For the liberties they have fought so hard for us to keep. But we are seeing these liberties being chipped away at more and more every year that passes. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. And we'll read verses 1 through 13. <clears throat> this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. 
For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Judging by the state of our country today, we are no doubt in the last times. Our liberties are under attack, and it is to the point where people in the United States of America are actually hating ones for following God and simply exercising their religious rights to worship. People that have experienced the hand of tyranny are seeing a dangerous pattern in America right now. We are no more than a few steps away from the edge. But Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. If we trust in God, we know that there is nothing that we need to fear. Though it seems that our liberties are fast disappearing, I know that there is not a group in the world that knows better than we do tonight that no man and no power can ever take our freedom of liberty in Christ. He has given us everything that we need to be free in every situation. He has never let us go and He never will. We are free for eternity, and our liberties are secure in Him. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And we'll read verses 8 through 13. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now... At the last, your care for me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to abase, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Paul knew all too well about losing things in this life. He lost many physical things, but he was never defeated. Until he took his last breath here on this earth, he maintained all the freedom and liberty that anyone could ever need because he put all of his stock in God. God's Word says in John 10:28. And I give unto you eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We need to take a step back and forget about men and the fear of what they might take away from us and remember that there is and always will be an almighty God that holds us and our liberties in His hand. He has promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Our liberty is forever secure in Him and Him alone. 
If you're familiar with the Declaration of Independence, you may have guessed what the last freedom I want to go over is tonight. And that is the freedom of the eternal pursuit of happiness. This last freedom is very dependent upon others. Our happiness is based in large part on the freedoms that we share as Americans. We have had plenty to be happy about and a lot to be thankful for in America. But if we continue to lose the freedoms of life and liberty as we have, as we have been, how will we find happiness? I think we all know the answer to that question. Psalm 144 verse 15 says, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. We still have the right in this country to seek after things that make us happy, which is an amazing freedom. The problem is that far too many Americans have chosen to pursue evil things for their happiness. We have seen many examples of this throughout all of history, and one prime example was David when he sought after Bathsheba. He wanted her so badly convinced that it would make him happy. Throughout this story we see that he stoops so low into depravity that he goes so far down as to commit murder. Sadly, this is the kind of happiness that America is seeking today. They are looking for things that will never make them happy, but will consume them. This is because our nation has forgotten what true happiness is. It's so sad, but most people in America today have never had the chance to experience the happiness that only Jesus Christ can give. Benjamin Franklin said, Let me then not fail to praise my God continually, for it is His due, and it is all I can return for His favors and great goodness to me. And let me resolve to be virtuous, that I may please Him who is delighted to see me happy. God truly is delighted to see us happy, and that is why pursuing the things that please Him is the only way to find true happiness. Turn with me, please, to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, and we'll read verses 6 and 7. The Word of God says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. What an honor. What a freedom we have to seek after Christ, to pursue him every day even though we don't always make the right decisions and we fail Him miserably on a daily basis, He is still right there to help us, to show us the true happiness that only He can give. I know that I have preached a lot of doom and gloom about America this evening. I hope that no one has taken it as though I'm saying that I or God have, are done with her, have given up on her. I love America. I love her with all my heart. But she is in so much trouble. We truly are hanging in the balance as a nation. That is why it is so important, now more than ever, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice for His work. <clears throat> Francis Marion, a famous brigadier general during the Revolutionary War, had this to say, Who can doubt that God created us to be happy and thereto made us to love one another? 
It is plainly written as the gospel. The heart is sometimes so embittered that nothing but divine love can sweeten it, so enraged that devotion can only be calm it, and so broken down that it takes all the forces of heavenly hope to raise it. In short, religion of Jesus Christ is the only sure and controlling power over sin. In closing, turn with me to Psalm chapter 33. Psalm chapter 33, and we'll begin reading in verse number 12. The Word of God says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of His habitation He looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, and he, consider, he considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength, and horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any but his, by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in His holy name. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in Thee. We have what this great nation needs to turn from the darkness and division that plagues it. We can still show them these eternal liberties that only God can give. So until I take my final breath, I will continue to believe that God can still turn America back to Him. Amen. I have given quite a few quotes from men on freedom this evening, but I will end with one quote from Almighty God Himself. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. and will heal their land. He can and will heal America. There's nothing too far gone for God. There's nothing that He can't do. If you're a child of God, and you believe that He cannot turn America around, then something's wrong with you as a Christian. He has the power and He can do it if we trust in Him and we serve Him and we fight every day to give Him everything. You know that He's going to give us everything right back. We'll go ahead and close in a word of prayer.